my channel if you happen to be new here. My name is Jess. As you guys can tell from the title of this video, today we are going to be reviewing the entire Illuminae series, the Illuminae files. I am so excited. I just finished Gemini and Obsidio, if you guys saw my mid-month check-in, and I kind of wanted to sit down and give you my overall thoughts on the series. This is going to be spoiler free because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. Now, obviously, if you have read this series, you're going to know everything that I'm talking about. If you have not read this series, I'm going to kind of give you my overall view on it and sort of what I thought. I'm not going to be going over each book specifically because like I said, I don't want to spoil this series for anybody. Obsidio did just recently come out as well, so I definitely want to avoid spoilers for that. But I'm going to give you the overall plot um, of each of the books so you guys can kind of decide if it is something that you guys are interested in or if it's something that you guys would like to avoid. I'm gonna go ahead and say it, I absolutely love this series. Some of these books I loved more than others and I'm gonna be trying to rate them on which ones I enjoyed more, but let's go ahead and just get started because I don't want to be here for 100 years and we all know that I'm absolutely terrible at book reviews, so I'm hoping because it's a series review it'll be slightly easier for me to do. <laughs> Alright, so this is the series. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys how much of a series you get. These books are absolutely massive. Massive, massive, massive. The first one is Illuminae. This one is so beautiful. I think this one, uh, cover-wise, is my absolute favorite. I really, really, really loved it. Now going into kind of just what this book itself is about, this book follows our main characters, Katie and Ezra. They live on a colony together and they do previously date when the story first begins and then their colony is attacked and they flee to this ship and this story was so good. I would say out of all of them, this one might be my absolute favorite. Um, it's, it's really hard to choose, but I would definitely say this one is my favorite. I really like the storyline for this one. There's an artificial intelligence named Aiden who does whatever he can to try to protect the people up aboard the ship that they are on because an outbreak happens and I'm not gonna go too into detail on kind of what that entails. But the artificial intelligence Aiden tries to do whatever he can to make sure that people are surviving, that people are safe. So him, Katie, and Ezra have to all kind of work together to make sure that the people on the ship are safe. Now, like I said, I don't want to go into too many spoilers, but I would say out of all of them, this one is my favorite. Bytech, Baytech, I don't know how you pronounce it, um, are the antagonists in this book, and I love them as antagonists and they are this big corporation who kind of wants to shut down this mining operation that they have on Crenza which is the colony that they live on in the beginning of the book and I really liked that I do like like bigger corporations being bad guys in books for some reason and um, if you guys are familiar at all I just read Nixia and Nixia Unleashed and it's kind of the same thing there as well I really like this story there is like a little bit of a budding romance in here which you shouldn't be too surprised about because obviously Katie and Ezra have a previous relationship I really like Aiden which is shocking because he has an artificial intelligence and sentient artificial intelligences, if you guys didn't know, is my worst fear on the planet. I'm absolutely terrified of that, um, even more so than I am like a flying, like I genuinely fear that artificial intelligence may one, at one point take over our world. But I really, really still love this book. I loved the characters. I thought the plot was really cool. I thought the pacing and the writing was done very, very well. I liked the continuity within it. I just, overall, I gave this book five stars. This was my running for my 2017 top pick of the year. My overall enjoyment of this was through the roof. I loved it and I'm so glad that somebody recommended it to me because I wasn't sure if I wanted to read it but I was seeing it all over bookstagram. So if you guys are wondering at all if you should read this, you absolutely 100% should. And the next we have Gemina. What they don't tell you when you first start Illuminae is that Gemina actually follows two completely different characters. They follow Hannah and Nick. Hannah is the daughter of the captain of the ship that they live on and Nick is actually a stowaway essentially. He like deals drugs and things like that and that's actually how you meet him as he actually Hannah's sort of drug dealer. Um, I really like this story because it does pull a lot of stuff from Illuminae. It kind of has the same plot line in a way. There are these things that kind of infest the ship and uh, other stuff that happens within the ship, but I don't want to give too much away from the story. But I really, really like this. I thought, once again, the plot and the pacing was done really well. There are a ton of different point of views in this book. Um, way more than Illuminae, but this one was still really good. I don't think Jay and Amy faltered at all when it comes to the multiple point of views. I was not confused at all reading this book, and I really loved it. I think when it comes to storyline, I actually preferred this one in a way because the main bad guy in this one I thought was a little bit more appealing to me. It kind of gave like a human aspect of things, and I really enjoyed that. I think that for me when it comes to bad guys or like scary things, because these books are kind of scary at points, I think humans scare me way more than monsters do, so I think that's why I like this. I will say I like Illuminae more than Gemina, but Gemina still holds up. I still gave this 5 out of 5 stars, but it was close to being about a 4.5, where Illuminae was a solid, solid 5. 
I still really love this book though and I would definitely recommend it but like I said it does not follow Katie and Ezra it follows two completely different people named Hannah and Nick and then also there's a couple more characters in here that I won't go too in depth about because I feel like people should just experience them as they experience them. Now the last book we have here is Obsidio. Now I'm gonna get briefly into Obsidio because I don't want to give away too much of what happens. This book actually follows a brand new character her name is Asha. She lives on the mining colony that is actually originally attacked and it follows Baytech, Pytech, however you say that and their kind of hold over the colony. I really, really love this story. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. I kind of noticed within all of these novels, there's a little bit of element of like a love interest, but they're done so well that it doesn't seem um, kind of like forced or awkward or, you know, just thrown in there for to appeal to people. I really like this. I love the story because it is more about like military control over the colony that they live on and Asha just trying to survive. And I thought it was really, really good. The, the thing about this book is though that it's so hard to read. There is so much that happens in this book that I, I wanted to be like, Jay, Amy, like, like, how could you write that? Not in like a, oh my god, it's so terrible, but in a, I couldn't have a heart to write some of the things that happened in this book. It was really, really good. I would say it's my least favorite out of all of them. There are so many point of views that at one point in time I did get a little bit confused on who is who. But as with all of these, I think that it's still done very well. The plot, the pacing, everything, and the ending of this book, you guys. The last 150 pages, I did nothing but cry. I won't go into any spoilers on kind of what happens or, you know, really anything like that. If you've read this series, you kind of know what I'm talking about. But it was so wonderful. It was so beautifully done. And I gave this book, it was a 4.5 out of 5, or like a 4.25 out of 5. So I still ended up giving it five stars because I tend to rate my books separately between like plot, continuity, everything else and kind of overall those and then I will rate it on enjoyment and then kind of meld the two together. So this one I, because I enjoyed it so so much, I ended up bumping it up to a five star read. Overall this series is absolutely wonderful. I just, like I said, this book is my least favorite out of all of them but I still really really enjoyed it and it was a great ending to the entire series. Alright guys, so that is it for what I thought of the Illuminae Files. I am so sad it's over. That's the first thing that I thought of was that I'm not gonna get to read about my babies anymore. The series is over, there's nothing left to read. And then I saw something that Jay posted online on Twitter that they are writing another series together. So I'm interested to see what happens there, but that is what I thought of the Illuminae Files. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys are having a good week. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing. Leave in the comments down below what you thought of this series if you have read it and I will see you guys in Friday's video. Bye.